Okay, so now let's read Mindy and the Goose no one else could see. Once there was a girl called Mindy who was afraid of something that no one else could see. This thing that she was afraid of, this thing that no one else could see, was a big goose. It came into her room as quietly as a thought comes into your head and it stayed there for as long as it wanted to. When she told her dad about it, he said, What? There's a goose in your room? He said hi and low for the big goose, but he could not find it. Mindy's mom made fun of it. She waved a wooden spoon above her head and said, Any goose that come in here will get a smack on his silly bottom. Mindy thought the big goose might be angry with the wooden spoon. Mom and Dad shut her windows tight, but windows, wall and door couldn't stop the big goose. It came and stayed as usual. It isn't real, my love, her mom said. Nobody has a goose in their room. I have, said Mindy. Well, you'll just have to close your eyes and make it not real. That night, as Mindy slept between her mommy and daddy, her mom whispered to her dad, We have a problem, you know. How do we get rid of this awful goose? Mindy's father had been asking himself the same question. He thought now of the wise old man called Austin, who had helped many people in the village with sensible advice. I will go and see him, thought Mindy's dad. I'll see what he has to say about geese. Austin and his animals live halfway up the mountain called Shelling Hill. He greeted Mindy's dad as he were a long remembered friend and listened with care to the story of the big goose. You see what we are up against, Austin? How can we deal with the fear of what isn't actually there? At that moment, a young god wandered over for a cuddle from Austin who fed it an apricot. The god swallowed the apricot but returned the hard stone to the hand of her master. Then Austin looked up and said, I think you should bring your Mindy to see me. Make sure she knows I live a long way away. Make sure he, she knows that she's going on a journey. And so it happened that Mindy and her father set off on the journey to Shelling Hill. When they arrived, Austin met them say hello to the animal, including his two noisy geese. Then they went indoor for some fruit juice. Before long, a young god poked open the door and wandered in as if she owned the place. Austin passed a juicy big apricot to Mindy. Here, this is what she wants. Give it to her and if she like you, she will give you back the stone. Let's see. The god returned the stone into Mindy's small hand. What is her name? Mindy asked. Oh, I have so many gods that I have run out of names. I just call her number 15. What would you call her? I would call her black and whitey, said Mindy. Perfect, laughed Aston. Black and whitey she shall be. On the way home, Mindy's dad talked about what they have seen on Shelling Hill. What did you think of those two geese? He asked carefully. Nice, they were nice geese. 
after a pause, Mindy added, but the big goose is nice. It was not the answer her father wanted to hear. A week went by, a week of heavy rainfall and clinging mud and sticky boat. Mindy's mom answered a knock at the door and there stood Austin, dripping wet. Come in, she said, such weather to be out. Sure, I never miss market day, said Austin, and in he came himself. And a goat on the end of a rope. Mindy recognized black and whitey at once. Mommy, have we any apricot? Dear me, no, just some plums. Oh, plums will do, said Austin. Goat are anything but fussy. Now then, Mindy, let's see if black and whitey still like you. We she give back the stone? She should, because you gave her such a lovely name. There was more than one plum and therefore more than one stone for Mindy to accept from the goat. Suddenly, she threw both arm around her and gave her a mighty neck squeezer of a hug. Black and whitey seem well pleased. Oh yes, Ma Austin, you two will be friends. I'm giving her to you, Mindy. Little Mindy looked at the old man with an extraordinary shine in her eyes. Then Austin say, but I must have something in return. You see, it's terrible bad luck to, be, to give away an animal without getting something back. So I thought I might exchange black and whitey for the big goose that no one else can see. He paused. It was quite a long pause. Would you agree to that? Mindy nodded once. The only problem is this, said Austin. You've been to my cottage, you know how far it is, what a journey, along the wide river, down the deep valley and up those foggy hill. Poof! You will not see that goose again. Little Mindy seems to be in deep thought as she fed her goat the last of the plums. And then she whispered to herself as softly as could be. I love my black and whitey. Two quick months went by. Mindy's dad went to see the grand old man on Shelling Hill and said, I came to thank you, Austin. There has been no talk of a big goose since the arrival of a certain goat for which I must pay you. A twinkle flicker in the red rim eyes. Oh, I'm well enough paid, the old one said. Come and see. Into the garden they step. Mindy's dad dodged the truck of approaching goat, avoided a rooster and his ladies, and laughed out loud as he came face to face with three driving geese. That is the end.